Shalom. Today we are going to continue our presentation on the bread and the wine. Previously we have talked about a Friday evening ritual at the beginning of Shabbat, which is called Kiddush or Kiddush, and we're going to compare that to traditional church communion. The prayer for Kiddush begins at the end of Genesis 1, Vayihi Ere, Vayihi Voker, Yom Hashishi, and it was evening and it was morning, the sixth day. Continuing in chapter 2, verse 1, Vayichulu Hashemayim v'ha'aretz v'chol tzivaam. And they were finished, the heavens and the earth and all their hosts. The reason that the beginning of the last verse is in small letters is because it is said in an undertone. And the reason for that is the same reason that I have highlight, highlighted these four letters, the beginning letters of the next four words. And you can see that that spells yud He vav He, which is the name of our God. The prayers continue in Genesis 2, 2 and 3. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Following are the two prayers that we have already discussed in the previous lesson the prayer over the wine, the prayer which indicates to us that it is um, things of the, related to things of the spiritual world, our faith, and the prayer uh, over the bread, which relates more to things of the physical world, related perhaps to our works. The next piece of the ritual or um, prayers that we'll discuss in a minute, they read as follows. Blessed are you, Yahweh our God, King of the universe, who sanctified us with his commandments and desired us and gave us his holy Sabbath with love and pleasure as an inheritance, a remembrance of the act of creation. I just want to add here that sanctified and holy are the same, have the same meaning. English is a very complex language. It has a huge vocabulary. Some of the words stem from Latin words, and so you have sanctified. This is a Latin root. And you also have holy, which comes from the Germanic words, but they mean the same thing. They mean kadosh. They mean to be set apart. Continuing with the prayer, for the Sabbath is the first of the holidays, a remembrance of the exodus from Egypt. For you have chosen us and made us holy from all the nations, and you gave us your holy Sabbath with love and pleasure. Blessed are you, Yahweh, who sanctifies the Sabbath. So this is for a set-apart time. Now about these prayers, uh, the rabbis say that the tradition of reciting Kiddush, which is the prayer that separates the time for Shabbat or any festival, this tradition goes back to the men of the Great Assembly who lived between the 6th and 4th centuries BCE. We're talking about the time of Ezra. The exact wording of the prayers comes from Talmudic times, so it's still quite early and it's still a very long tradition. This is the set-apart time, which is Shabbat, and the prayers which go with that. Uh, within that context, we have the blessing over the bread and the wine. We also saw previously that Yeshua made these blessings, and he made them in the blessings in the context of Passover. It is written in 1 Corinthians 11, 23-26. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Yeshua on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, which he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament, or covenant, in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, 
you do show the Lord's death till he come. Now, I talked last time a bit about the use of the word testament there. The translation, I believe that that was uh, purposefully done to misdirect people from finding the new covenant, uh, which does appear in Jeremiah 31. The, the word there is the athiki, and it is translated 20 times as covenant, 13 times as testament. There is no other Greek word for testament, and so to my mind, this was a deliberate misdirection. So here we are, we're in the context of the Passover meal, which is the Last Supper or the Lord's Supper. Um, sometimes when you go in church and you take communion, it's called the Lord's Supper. It is based specifically on this ritual. We see there's only these two blessings. Presumably, the night and the evening has been sanctified long before we get to this portion of the ritual. I want to say uh, just a word about uh, this new covenant. The new covenant is found in Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. To understand that this is a new covenant, you have to know a little bit about uh, Hebrew grammar. I'm not going to go into too much detail on it here. For one thing, you can look up every place that this word chadash, here it's chadasha, it's in the feminine, because covenant brit is feminine. Um, every single place, it means new. Now, I know a lot of people go in their concordance and they say, they look at this root and it says it also means renewed, and they try to make some extrapolation that this is a renewed covenant, like there was a covenant before, but now this is a renewal of that covenant. The Hebrew is very clear that it is a brand new thing. Um, and you can only see it in the grammar. I'm going to show you some examples. And it's difficult because the word renewed is not ever used as an adjective. So we're kind of comparing adjectives to verbs. But I'll just show you a little bit. Um, here in Psalm 51.12, where it says, renew a right spirit within me. This It is a verb, but this verb is in the PL form. It's in a more intensive form. It's chadesh. To, to, it just means to renew. In another case here, even though uh, this looks like an adjective in English, it's, it appears as a verb. In Psalm 103.5, that youth is renewed like the eagles, but it's it's actually a verbal form. It's in the hitpa'el, titchadesh. So every time you see renew in the uh, Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew, it's going to be, uh, even though it's the same root, chadash nu, every time you see it as renewed, it's going to be in a more intensive um, verb form, either pl or hitpa'el. The covenant that Yeshua made with the disciples on that evening is a new covenant. It's the new covenant which is defined in Jeremiah 31. If we have a covenant, if we make an agreement between us, there are parameters of the covenant. Um, you do this and I do this. I'm, you're going to build my house. I'm going to pay you the money. In the New Testament, in the Brit Chadashah, you do not see anywhere what are the parameters of the covenant. It doesn't name it anywhere. You have to go back to Jeremiah to find out what the parameters are. So let's look at that. Continuing in Jeremiah 31, verse 32, Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband to them, saith Yahweh, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it on their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. So this is the parameters of the new covenant. This is not something which has happened before. It is going to happen after the death of Yeshua. He announces the covenant over the, uh, in the context of the Passover meal. And then uh, he does uh, go to the cross. And then some days afterwards, we see that the spirit is poured out. So just comparing these two things, the Shabbat 
wine and bread with the Passover bread and wine. So in Shabbat, we see that we take the wine first and then the bread. In Passover, we take the bread first and then the wine. We've already talked about the deeper meanings of the wine and the bread in the first part of this presentation. You can go back and look at that. Shabbat, we use leavened bread, which is called challah. In Passover, we used unleavened bread, uh, which is matzah. In Shabbat, we have a longer amount of blessing surrounding the ritual um, for sanctifying the time. In the Passover, we just see the short blessings over each element. Shabbat is designated as a remembrance of creation and the flight from Egypt. Every uh, holiday, every celebration festival in Jewish thought is a uh, remembrance of the flight from Egypt. Now, why is this? Because this is the beginning of the solidification of the nation, uh, of the people. It's the same for each person. The flight from Egypt uh, is your born again experience. It parallels that or whatever, however you want to frame that is the beginning of your walk. And so every festival we go back, we look back to that time and say, yes, I am on this walk. This is the day when I began to walk that walk. For Shabbat, we're talking about sanctifying that, those 24 hours from sundown to sundown. Passover is also, of course, a remembrance of the flight from Egypt and specifically the death of Yeshua. Shabbat we do once a week. Uh, Passover we do once a year. Yeshua said, as often as you drink this cup, eat this bread, what is the context of that? The context of that is Passover it's once a year. And we see that after his death and resurrection in Acts chapter 2, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like a, as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So this is the fulfillment, the initial fulfillment of for those people in that generation of that part of the covenant. So for Kiddush, we see the wine is the spirit and the blood of atonement, which we talked about previously. We receive the atonement so that we can be made into a body. We are united by the spirit and participate as a body. Clearly in, uh, in traditional church, in the communion service, this is based on what happens at the Last Supper, at the Passover Supper, although people take it more often than once a year at Passover. And uh, sometimes they will use uh, leavened bread instead of unleavened bread, but it is clearly modeled on that service. And in this service, the bread is broken as the body of Yeshua was broken in order that we might receive the Spirit. I hope that this is a little bit helpful to you and helps you think about some of the things uh, that you are doing, maybe some things that you have done in the past. In the meantime, keep your eyes on the sky. Your redemption draws nigh. Shalom.